Welcome back to How to Tickle Yourself. I'm your host, Duff McDonald, along with my co-host, Matt McButter. Today's guest comes to us from the leafy suburb of Bronxville, New York. His name is Dave Scaff, and he's the co-founder of Geology, spelled G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E, a brand that started off offering personalized skincare for men, but which recently added a whole swath of body and hair care products to their arsenal and is now very much a unisex name. Geology has been around since 2018, but they've really hit the gas in 2022 and 2023, releasing a whole new spate of products, including vitamin C serum, a number of hair care products, exfoliator, deodorant, and body wash. We're talking to him for a couple of reasons. Number one is that I'm a customer of geology and I love it. It makes me happy. It really does to take care of my skin and hair using their products, which are just awesome. My favorite new product is their co-wash, a kind of combination shampoo and conditioner in my favorite scent of all tea tree menthol and aloe, but tea tree, anything tree tree. I'm a sucker. We want to talk to Dave about what it's like to run a direct-to-consumer internet brand these days, how he decided to leave a successful career running an internet marketing agency to head out on his own with co-founder Nick Allen. And the other thing we're going to talk to Dave about is parenting, you know, because guys these days talk about skincare and parenting. We're woke. More to the point, Dave is the stepfather of her ladyship, one Marguerite McDonald, the daughter of yours truly. So Dave runs his business in partnership with Nick, and he fathers in partnership with me. Hopefully he will give you the secrets of both. Welcome to the show, Dave. We're glad to have you. Hey, man. It's great to be here with both of you guys. I really appreciate it. And that was a magnificent intro. I'm not sure what I have left to say. <laughs> After present moment, traveling town to town, the mystery of the motion, right here, right now, right here, right now, whoa, right here, right now. All right, so I'll give. Uh, we, I can start you off. Uh, when we met, uh, you were running your own uh, internet marketing agency, which you were a co-founder of. A uh, uh, lot of employees, some big name clients, and uh, suddenly, five years ago, you were you decided that you wanted to roll the dice on the risk of a startup. What happened? How'd you How'd you go from there to here? Yeah, sure. It's important to note that when we met, we were also all dressed as Wizard of Oz characters for <laughs> Halloween. So I just want to get yeah. that out there first for the audience. Did, 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 just so that the audience can picture this, which, which characters in particular were each of you guys? You know, to be honest, as, as, as I was thinking about that, I'm not <laughs> sure I can remember, but I think for the edit, we can provide the photo. And it is a good one. <laughs> yeah. And Dave and I had never met before. And uh, he and Marguerite and Caroline walked into my apartment. Uh, we were all in costumes. And Caroline said to Marguerite, she said, OK, go, go ahead. And Marguerite says, Daddy, meet Dave. Dave, <laughs> meet Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it was a great intro. And then we all trick or treated together. Cool, um, cool. So, so yeah, just to, just to sort of answer your question, yeah, what, what sort of led me here? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I was thinking about this because I thought you might ask me a question like that. And obviously this podcast is about sort of, you know, how to take yourself, how to find happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think what led me to where I am right now, which is a very happy place, was actually being in a very unhappy place um, before that. Um, I actually, you know, didn't really enjoy my first major entrepreneurial experience in owning um, and being a partner in internet marketing agency. It was just, um, it was a lot of stress. I mean, I enjoyed the work itself, but there were many aspects of the experience 
um, that I didn't enjoy. And I was ready to sort of move on, but I didn't really know how to move on, um, you know, from something you own. It's hard. You, you can't just sort of find another job and leave. There's a lot of other work that needs to be done to sort of leave a business partnership. So I was trying to figure out how to do that and having conversations with my partner at the time about how to do that. Um, when Nick came to me wanting some advice and some help with this idea that he had in its infancy at the beginning of 2018. So I really just sort of began helping him um, and discovered along the way that that could be a next move for me. Um, I just, you know, I, I think it's actually probably worth mentioning. I actually read a pretty influential book. There's a book that I really love. There's, there's an author that I really love. Many know him from the sort of business community named Seth Godin. And he's written a lot of really good, interesting business and entrepreneurial books. But the one that was most important to me is actually one that's called The Dip. And it's about how to quit things. And mm. I think the sort of flip side of sort of how to get to happiness is how do you get out of unhappiness? And I think that's where a lot of people get really stuck, whether that whether it's a, a personal relationship, a family relationship, a business relationship, how to figure out if sort of a painful situation is worth going for because there's a worthwhile promised land on the other side or not is I think a really, really sort of big life decision, set of life decisions that people don't talk about or pay enough attention to. And that book helped me figure out that I needed to move on from that place. And I was fortunate enough in my life to sort of find another experience. And I think also just, you know, one door closes, another door open opens when you're, when you're, when you're ready for the next step, it often presents itself. And I think that's basically what happened here. I was intrigued by the idea. And I do think that Nick and I are great partners um, because of our pre-existing friendship. He and I were roommates in San Francisco for, um, you know, five years before I moved back to New York in 2007. Um, he is a classic sort of number one CEO type. I am a classic number two COO type. He does not like details. I love <laughs> details. You know, he wants to focus on the big, big, big picture a year out. I want to make sure everything's running really well right now, today for the next couple of months. So, mm. um, you know, we make a really good business partnership, I think. Um, because we like doing very, very different things and we are, we are, we are good at the different things we like doing. And we don't really have, we have a little bit of overlap, um, enough to sort of come together and understand each other, but we really sort of stay out of each other's way and let each other do our own jobs, which I think really is great. And also I think that, you know, we sort of joke around, we, we have a lot of friends who we would never, ever want to work with. But we had the experience of working together because he did, in his previous jobs, hire my agency on several occasions. So we sort of figured out that we could work together. And in our case, our friendship creates a lot of trust and shorthand that does make working together both enjoyable, but I think also really, really efficient. Um, and I think it really, really sort of, I think that, like the strength of that relationship, I think also translates well down to our team. Um, I think they sort of feel that comfort um, and trust. And I think that does extend through the rest of the team as well. So, um, skincare, uh, yeah. as a, as a guy, uh, and I know there's Nick's got his whole story cause, uh, we wrote, uh, Christian and I wrote a chapter right. on Nick and Dave's, uh, on geology in our book, frictionless. So I'm I'm quite familiar with these guys from both the product and business, but like it's not an obvious thing for a guy to get into. How did you how did you go from what I'm guessing was somewhere similar to where I was, which is you probably didn't do a lot of skincare to being yeah. like, you know what, this is a great idea. Let's do a men's skincare company. Yeah, sure. It's a great question. I mean, I, I think first of all, it's like you know, and I think about this all the time still, like, how did we get here? The world definitely didn't need another skincare brand, right? So like, why are we doing this? What's the, what's the purpose? What's the reason, right? Um, I mean, I did have some experience working with skincare brands at my agency. We worked with a variety of different Estee Lauder companies. 
Um, and we worked with uh, Kiehl's for several years, actually. So I was pretty familiar uh -huh. with the sort of market as well. And it's actually funny because I had a lot of product around, but I had stopped using it because it just didn't really seem to do anything. And <laughs> what we sort of discovered, and which I sort of still marvel at, is that the simple fact is that in the skincare world, there is just a lot of stuff that doesn't do anything. And <laughs> there's, there's, also, there's also stuff that's just plain old bad, right? So there's bad stuff, there's stuff that doesn't do anything, but is not bad. And then there's the actual good stuff. And what we sort of discovered along the way was that there is still, there was still then, there is still now, a place in the world for legit product that actually does what it says it's going to do. We have like an amazing dermatologist from the team that sort of Nick sort of just, you know, found out at the ether. He's a Northwest. Um, he's a professor at Northwest um, of dermatology. And he's also a practicing dermatologist in Chicago named Steve Zhu. And he's amazing. He's familiar with the business world, but also obviously really familiar as a, you know, practicing dermatologist with, the ingredients that make a difference, the concentrations of them that you need to sort of have to, that, that will actually impact skin health. And our conversation really just began with him. And one of the problems with the world is not only the sort of product problem I described earlier, but also it's just a navigational issue, right? You go to the drugstore, how do you choose the product? Well, most of them are not good um, or aren't going to do what they say they're going to do. And the ones that are good and are going to do what they say they're going to do are very sort of hard to find for the average shopper, right? So part of what we wanted to do as a company was use personalization to make the right products for you sort of impossible to get wrong and certainly easy to get right and easy to use, right? So what we really do is for you know 90% of our customers is they come onto our site, they go through a diagnostic, we answer some, we answer, we ask them some very, very simple questions that, you know, that they actually will know the answers to. That are not sort of obscure or arcane, or you sort of have to sort of like be on Reddit every day discussing skincare to sort of understand. Very, very simple, very, very fast. And then you get the right regimen personalized for you, and it's very, very easy to buy. That's how 90% of our customers sort of begin with us. And that's really sort of the ethos of our brand, right? We we've been able to make these excellent formulations that are very high and dense with active ingredients that actually make a difference in skin health. And it's, it's actually quite fascinating, right? Like, why do we exist? Why did the brand, you know, this, I mean, one of the most satisfying things for me in what we do is actually just talking to our customers and reading our reviews. And especially the ones that say things like, I tried everything else. You know, many guys in particular will say things like, I was going to give up on skincare, but I decided to give this company one last try and lo and behold their products actually did what they said they were going to do that's very satisfying and that's sort of why we exist in the world and yeah it does seem strange i mean all these celebrities have their skincare brands right now there are hundreds of legacy skincare personal care wellness brands out there and still there's a place for a brand like ours to basically succeed by making great product that does what it says it's going to do amidst an industry of average products that often don't do that. It's sort of crazy, but that's actually the landscape and that's why we've succeeded. Is, is part of the la landscape, the celebrity name and the celebrity endorse? I mean, have you guys thought about that as a strategy? Like, oh, if, you know, we only had. They got a yeah, big page on their site of endorsements, right? From, from like known celebrities. Well, kind of we know we have a yeah. we have a bunch of really really like strong like influencer partnerships, um, particularly with like YouTube influencers. That's been really really sort of just successful for us as a marketing channel. I think one of the reasons that that's been really successful for us is because uh, most good influencers who have a quality audience will not endorse a product that is crap. Um, this actually is a painting by one of our influencers named a uh, surfer, pro surfer named Tia Blanco. Um, <laughs> like every one of our influencers tries our product for a month and gives it the heave ho. And only then we'll sort of decide whether they want to work for us. It's pretty easy because 
Our product is excellent. It does what it says it's going to do. And especially again, if they if they're familiar with skincare, that's even better for us because they know then sort of what average or low quality stuff looks like, right? So that's been successful for us as an outgrowth of really having great product. In terms of like actually like having a celebrity involved with us, I just don't think that's the right path for us. We are, I think, much more proud to have a dermatologist who is world class and chemists who are world class making world class product and putting the proof in the pudding rather than, you know, selling it because Brad Pitt or Pharrell is associated with the brand, right? Um, I mean, I think that, you know, people in the industry definitely think that it is trending towards authoritative and credible, which I think is what we are. Um, you know, the hit, the sort of press PR social hit of celebrity endorsement or partnership can really only go so far. I think it's great to get a brand off the ground, right? And to get mm -hmm. some initial notoriety. But at the end of the day, both men and women are going to judge the quality of the personal care they buy by how much they enjoy it and how effective it is. Yeah, and they're going to they're going to use it. The, the celebrity endorsement might make them buy it once and then they're going to use it and yeah, I, exactly. I, I, get, I get it. That makes sense. So yeah. so pitch me a little bit as someone who, <laughs> I, I'm not a skincare guy. <laughs> yeah, sure. And so tell me, yeah, tell me that, like, what, like, how do you get someone, I mean, do I, how do you get me to care about skincare? Um, what are these benefits? Yeah, yeah, what are the benefits? Yeah. Well, the easiest way would just be to make you like under 40, right? Because like <laughs> guys under 40 care a lot more about skincare than guys <laughs> over 40. I can tell you that pretty categorically from our data. Can you do uh, that? <laughs> I can't do that, but we can. You can make can me look like you, it. Yeah. We can start making you look like you are under 40. You know, it, 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 here's kind of a funny story, right? So Nick and I sort of got involved with this. We were sort of setting out on our way in, in with product development along with our dermatologist and the chemists we worked with initially. And what we learned sort of pretty quickly was that wow, shit, good product actually makes a real difference. Like when we got the first samples from our chemists and we've come a long way in terms of evolving our product quality to be even higher than it was then. But when we started using it just in the first two weeks, Nick and I saw massive differences, right? And we were like, wow, not only is there a market opportunity here, but good skincare actually works, right? And that was a moment I mean, I was very, very excited by sort of that moment. And I have to say, like, I've carried that enthusiasm for the product and for providing results like through to now. It's really, really it, it's fun to be a part of a company that's actually delivering product that actually literally improves people's lives. Right. I mean, with the benefits, certainly looking younger at our age, I mean, the quality of your sort of like the look of your skin, it, it, it does make a difference. I mean, these ingredients that moisturize your skin or address specific concerns or add a brightness or a glow or diminish dark areas or conquer acne. I mean, that's that's actually the number one issue that people come to us with is I want my acne to go away, both men and women, right? I mean, that's a that's a you know, acne for both teens and adults is an issue that really does affect self-confidence, right? So um, you know, Good skincare can and does actually solve for all of that, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of men over 40 don't know that much about skincare, are intimidated by it, don't really understand it, um, you know, or its benefits. Um, the younger generations, really not so. They're paying a lot more attention than, you know, we did when we were coming up. And of course, you know, women across all ages generally pay a lot more attention than we do too. So we're we're kind of, you know, the minority in this, right? So maybe, a, a, you know, nothing else. Maybe you just want to kind of get with the program and get with the majority <laughs> on this. Okay. <laughs> now, I, now I'm like, I'm, now I'm just looking at my, you know, my <laughs> terrible you skin. All right, look at, look at this, <laughs> look at this shining forehead. This is oh, courtesy and just, and of geology. Wait, and, and just wait until the zoom filters off. Then you're going to see some real problems. So, <laughs> yeah. so we, so you guys, one of your taglines, I, uh, I guess is powered by facts, not fads. Uh, 
you do so which goes to explain why you don't have charcoal toothpaste it does actually goes to explain why we don't have any charcoal products <laughs> so yeah so what are what are and you also have this great section on your site called geology university which is basically sort of an educational thing give us give us uh your favorite two uh myths of skincare or of just you know it, you know of the charcoal variety God, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, we definitely view myth busting as a major part of our company and our brand, right? That's we work with um, our dermatologists and our chemists to determine the what's what on all of this sort of stuff. And actually, one of my goals for this year is to start actually producing um, video content for our site. Actually, that's sort of reacting to various TikTok trends and things that we think are just not that great. I mean, charcoal, don't even get me started. Like, it's really not that effective. It's not great as a cleanser. It stains the shower and sink. Um, it's just, it's really a not clinically proven fad ingredient. It is not bad, right? So we talked about this earlier. It's not bad, but it's also not good, right? It's mm. not doing really anything special that other better ingredients, I think, can't also do. So that's that's really not a great one. Here's one I saw the other day. There has been a, uh, here's a whole evolution I saw the other day that really sort of irked me. There has been a, there was a big TikTok trend through the last half of last year that talked about using uh, dandruff shampoos to treat acne, right? And the idea was that these sort of antifungal uh, ingredients like zinc pyrithione are really good to treat acne. It's not entirely untrue, but it is mostly untrue. And I actually just last week saw this filter up to be a headline on CNN's homepage, which was about, you know, why are so many people using dandruff shampoo to treat acne? It was very clickbaity. And it was just troublesome because you go there and it was very actually hard even reading the article to figure out that the ingredient zinc pyrithione can be used to battle fungal acne. That is true. However, the vast majority of acne that people are trying to conquer is not fungal acne, right? So it started on TikTok. These nuances aren't covered there. It's made it all the way to CNN. They did a bad job covering the nuances. And now there are a lot of people out there thinking that dandruff shampoos are great for acne. They're great for a very specific Mm. And not nearly as common type of acne, but that's just sort of how our media works these days. So stuff like mm -hmm. that drives me crazy, right? And there are a number of other like-minded brands in our space and people who are, I think, really like out there fighting the good fight, trying to bust the myths, trying to, you know, debunk um, worthless trends, Um yeah, I mean it's a it's 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 kind of a weird space that way. And again, like I think I I I feel for consumers in the space because brands have so many products with so many weird exotic ingredients that it 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 really is and can be a very sort of dispiriting and difficult space to navigate. I mean, our whole sort of reason for being is to really have as many as few, the fewest number of products possible, each packed with the most ingredients possible to impact your skin, body, or hair health, right? I mean, we don't want a massive product catalog. We want, um, you know, one sort of really great product in every category that is necessary. Is sort of a better way of looking at kind of what we're doing and make it easy to shop and make it easy to get great results. Yeah, it is amazing how like the Col the Colgate Palm Olives and the Unilevers have so many different products in a category. It's insane, and it's mm -hmm. actually on the on the charcoal toothpaste front. I feel like a total sucker because <laughs> I mean I don't buy it all the time, but I've I've bought it a couple of times, and I also I bought a uh, like a charcoal toothbrush, like an Oral B. It's yeah. like got you know black on the bristles, <laughs> and you know I just kind of look at a big company like that, and I'm like, they must have some scientists that have you know proven this out. So <laughs> it, I'll see if it works. Here's what I'll add, though. I do feel that wellness should also be fun, right? So yeah. charcoal isn't bad. I said it before, 
but it's not any better than other toothpaste you could use. But if you are having fun with it and you are going to use it more than you would use other toothpaste, that's a wonderful benefit. Those are two great benefits. And I wouldn't, wouldn't, I would never argue with those. Right. So I think that's, that, that's, that's really totally, fantastic. that's totally. Um, so for listeners that like they got started with a skincare regimen, which is like a face wash, uh, a day cream and then eye cream and a night cream. And one of the things that got me, uh, into it was that it was fun. I was like, I had no idea that this was fun. Uh, and also you guys have a great design aesthetic. I wouldn't have the faintest idea how to describe it, but the, like, uh, the holding your, um, products in the hand and stuff also, um, they're, they're, they're nice to look at. So the whole experience, as far as I'm concerned, it's like part of my day that I look forward to. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, again, personal care should be should be fun and joyous. The more you enjoy it, the more you're going to do it. You know, the knock on benefits from there are are, are are obvious. Right. So we we try to bring fun into the way we talk into the packaging. I mean, for those of you who are you know watching the video right now, you can see we have a lot of like sort of brightly colored packaging back here. We have these body washes that come in just fun colors. I mean, I I designed these body washes with some colors to make them more fun to use like that's and that i think is a worthwhile like end into itself right so we already have all the right ingredients right you're going to get the results you're going to get better results the more you use the stuff right so and the more fun you're having the more fun you, you know the more often you're going to use it it's really simple that way i mean it's funny kind of funny you duff you mentioned our, our sort of co-wash product earlier and um, you guys also mentioned sort of just like, you know, there's so many hair care products out there. It's really funny. I mean, like we, this is a very sort of unique product. It doesn't look or feel like shampoo or conditioner. It's very viscous. I mean, I'm just sort of showing some right now, but that does not look like shampoo or conditioner. It's this very sort of thick, viscous paste really. Right. And what's special about this is that it's not actually really neither a shampoo nor a conditioner, right? It doesn't look like either one. It's this sort of pasty kind of thing. And the reason we have been really like successful with this product since we launched it in, in September is, is because sort of like there, there is a version of like kind of big hair care had you fooled, right? Shampoo, most of the time, strips all the good oils out of your hair, right? It's like a howitzer. It's like chemotherapy. It just takes everything takes all the bad stuff out, but it takes all the good stuff out with it, right? So then what do you need to do? You've taken all the good stuff out. Ah, you're going to need a second product consumer. You're going to need a conditioner <laughs> to replace all the good stuff you just took out, right? Great, no problem, great. So then you use the conditioner, it kind of like simulates natural oils, right? So you get a little, but that wasn't quite good enough. You're also now going to need hair styling products, right? Because you have no oil left in your hair, right? And then a couple of days later, you're going to, you know, sort of get back to an oily place. You're going to have to start the whole cycle over. I mean, one of the, the one of the great things about this sort of co-wash product is that it, like I said, it breaks the oil cycle, right? So right, right now, a lot of people have this experience where you wash the hair and then it's kind of dry and you have a couple of days in the middle where it's like just perfect and then it gets oily and you got to start it over again, right? That's because you're constantly stripping the oil, right? It happens with your face too. If you overwash your face, if you overwash your scalp with detergents and shampoos, you're going to get overproduction of oil, right? So that's what most people are experiencing with like the traditional shampoo, conditioner, styling product solutions provided by big hair care, right? So we have like, this is one very, very innovative product um, that we've invented um, and which has been really succeeding well for basically, you know, the reasons I just described. We actually also sell shampoo and conditioner because there is a place for that, for the right kinds of hair and used in the right way. but the co-wash product has been like our bestseller. Duff has tried it actually since um, before yeah, it's we it's great. It's and, great. And loves it. I've just, I've just realized, I mean, I, I don't even know any of the basics about how my hair and my skin works. Like even when you were just saying that there, like I've just my entire life, I've sort of looked at it like, you know, shampoo, 
is what you put on first yeah. and conditioner is what you put on afterwards because that's <laughs> what my parents taught me when I was a little kid. And for a brief time in my 20s, I think I got a two in one product because it was <laughs> right. cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, again, what did the world need another skincare brand, right? Did, did it need mm-hmm. another personal care brand? It, it actually did. It, it did. It, it does need one or some that are really going out of their way to provide really high quality information. Again, there are some other good brands. We're not, we're not alone. Like I said, there are, there are sort of a set of brands that I, along with ourselves, admire for sort of being out there fighting the good fight, fighting against the BS, going out of their way to educate their customers. I mean, that's one thing we really, I think, do well in all of our products. We, we include a lot of sort of instructional material. You see it repeated in our reviews all the time. Like, Hey, one thing I really loved about this brand is like everything was really easy to use. They told me exactly how much to use. They told me exactly when to use it. Like everything was super simple. So I was left with no questions. Right. And it's just kind of weird. Like that's, there's still room for a brand that is going to make it mm-hmm. all easy and kind of, you know, not make you up to search the internet for like every like bit of instruction. Tell you how to use soap, Matt. You can yeah. get some geology product, mm-hmm. tell you how to clean yourself. Yeah. I sometimes I, I I mean I have read the the back of the shampoo container and it says lather, rinse, and repeat sometimes. Yeah. Seven minutes. Seven minutes yeah. for your conditioner. <laughs> so so <laughs> switching gears. Switching gears. Uh, Dave, you are uh my daughter's stepfather, Marguerite. So um uh, you also jumped into an entirely different situation than you were in at a point late in your life where you went from uh, being single to being a stepfather. Uh, how's uh, how are we doing? What what's a, what grade do you give us as a team? I mean, honestly, right now, like a plus, I have to be honest, I, 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 I do spend time thinking about obviously like how could she be better and i think she's at like a serious peak right now like she is as good as she has ever been and i do think that a lot of that um you know certainly comes down to sort of her wonderful innate qualities but i also feel like as a set of four parents that we have done a really good job guiding her along the way oftentimes through difficult situations. So I think that there's um, nature that's working. And I do think there's a lot of nurture that's working as well. I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about like specific qualities that I admire. Um, yeah. In her, why not? Sort of why not? Those, but yeah. Where do you want to go from here? But I, my grade is a plus actually. See, what do you get? Matt, Matt. You need well, any parenting I, advice from us? Dave and I are here <laughs> at the ready. Get, give us your questions. Well, I, I, I do just want to, you know, give you guys um, big kudos on co-parenting so well, because of my divorced friends, I can probably, I can count probably, you know, two or three that are in your camp of getting, a, you know, of, of figuring it out and getting along well and, you know, Trick or treating together, spending holidays together, and just doing all of that stuff without the, um, you know, without the kind of embitterment that happens in many in many. Well, uh, well you know, it's interesting. You, you you bring that up. It's like if the I thought this through early on, where I was like, okay, I guess I could um, decide to be a dick to this person who I don't know because he's coming in and. Um, is uh is you know t- t- taken over something from me and that but i it was so quick where i was like wait he and i don't have a history at all right so you should go in fresh it hasn't been the sit like what you know it, it Carol, didn't happen overnight but didn't yeah. happen overnight but we didn't i d- i made a conscious decision at least on my part up front that i wasn't gonna be like oh here comes asshole Right. Because yeah. we didn't it, it's sort of like you're transferring bitterness of a situation gone wrong onto someone who isn't like doesn't deserve it. So I consciously decided to do that. Um, in, in, in my case, I had um, my parents were divorced and remarried and I had um, two very excellent and very influential 
um, step parents that I loved and learned a lot from and who very much shaped who I am today, uh, probably just about as much as my biological parents did. And mm. so I think for me, that experience, <clears throat> I think, always gave me confidence that I could mean a lot to Marguerite, right? And I think mm. that's that's sort of an important part of, of, of I think, being a step parent is mm-hmm. that you, you have to believe that you can be really important to this person and not really an afterthought or particularly secondary. I mean, I think it also helps in, in Marguerite's case. I, you know, she met me when she was, you know, as part of her earliest memories, basically. It's, it's, it's a little bit hard, I think, for her to remember at this age um, a time without me. Right. So that, that certainly helps. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know that. if I've ever, Matt. I don't know if I've ever told you this. Um, one of Marguerite's greatest questions she's ever asked me was she was learning a little bit about the birds and the bees, and she goes, "Daddy, when you and mommy made me, was Dave there?" <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't think so. (laughs) So like, and with, you know, there's been some blowups along the way, most of them my fault, but I think one of the the things that we're good at too is, you know, you put the interest of the child first and try and get by any stupidity that adults have. And like Dave said, she's still at an age where it's like, there's no cynicism. She's turning into a, a a teenager slowly, but she's not. She's such a sweetheart, and um, it's kind of easy to do this uh, with, like Dave said, four people who care. Um, and I think I saw that early too with you, Dave. It was like the the she loves him, right? And um, uh one of the times I realized that it's like now, granted, we ha- our names start with the same letter, so <laughs> there you could. But as often as not, she will blurt out Dave to me, right? And the first time that happened, I'm sure I was like, you know, <laughs> but then, but then it, it now it's like, oh, we're interchangeable for her. We're father figure to her. And it's a good feeling because um, to know that your child's being taken care of. And so thanks, Dave. And um, yeah, I mean, she's he's all she, 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 go on, go on. He's also just a great he's we're we have a, Dave and I have some similarities. We must because Caroline married both of us like so. And she's one person. Right. So. We have to have some shared traits, um, but. The other thing is, is he fills in uh, all sorts of gaps uh, that uh, I don't have. Uh, Dave's been her soccer coach for years, and they had a for a run there for a while. They had a great team. Yeah, um, I would not. Ne- I could never be a soccer coach. You don't Matt's know a, how to kick a ball. Matt's a coach. That's a <laughs> hockey coach. So you got two coaches here. But yeah, no, yeah, it's I been. Mean, I mean, that very much reflects the experience I had with my step parents, right? So they. They, my, my stepmother had many admirable qualities that my mother was not capable of. My stepfather had a, was was very very different than my father, right? And I learned a lot from all of them, and that was that was great for me. And I think again, I think that diversity of experiences has so far worked out in Marguerite's favor, one hundred percent, for the reasons you know Duff just described. I mean, I do think that we all, yeah, we do. I mean, I think that you know, she has a great 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 sense of humor and she always has since she was very very young i love to laugh i think duff you are laughing most of the time um you know i think that she's i think she had that right that i think i think that was an an innate part of who she was but i think that we've also helped to nurture and develop that sense of humor along the way both of us um you know pretty much at every turn you know i think that duff you and i are both I think pretty independent thinkers. And I think that, you know, I, I really feel like you have in particular prioritized independent thought to her. And I really feel like she has adopted that. And I think that, you know, she's really taken that to the bank now in middle school uh, in the form of sort of not taking the bait on a lot of 
kind of middle school crap. Um, I think she really, really does a good job being her own person, thinking for herself, being, you know, and, and, and that's a, it's a real testament, I think. I mean, that's that, you know, I think those are, you know, great sense of humor you've got to have to get through life. I think independent thought is another thing you have to have to get through life. I wish I had her sense of humor and her sense of independent thought when I was in eighth grade, I would have been way better for it for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Same. All right. So there we go. Um, yeah. Thank you, Dave. It's been great, uh, with, uh, with having you as a stepfather of, as her stepfather, she is also, it's all the tickles, right? Matt's got two daughters. He know he knows the, the, the whole story. It's like, to me, it's like, we keep it ticklish and you know, life will take care of itself. Right. Yeah. I think, I think we're also, we're also sort of all very fortunate with her that, that we, she likes to do a lot of the same things that her parents like to do. I mean, obviously part of that's just through sort of exposure. And I think we've sort of gotten lucky that, that she likes to do a lot of things and it's, it's, it's fun to spend time with her doing things that sort of, we all like to do with her. Right. I think that's sort of been a hallmark of all of our sort of relationships with her too, which is, which is fun. I, I don't, I don't know that, every parent gets to have that experience, you know, with their child. But, but I think we're, we're very lucky that way with her. Uh, Matt, it sounds like you do have that experience with your children, but not, not everybody has that where the, where the, where the, where the child and the parents really do like a lot of the same things and then like doing those same things together. That's, that's a really, really, I think, special thing for her and for us. Matt was just down in uh, Lake Placid with one of his daughters at a hockey tournament. So awesome. that he's got peak Canadian parenting glory going there. Oh yeah. I've got, I've got a lot of, t- a lot of arena time this winter. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, It's pretty insane tonight, tomorrow, two games, Saturday, two games, Sunday and Jesus. a, uh, and a skills competition on Saturday. Yeah. And that's just Daphne's hockey. That's not even mine. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah. I actually play on a hockey team as well. Oh so, yeah, Dave plays hockey. That was actually a little challenging for me when it when it emerged that American stepfather was a, a talented hockey player and Canadian <laughs> father was not. I kept that one. I kept that on the QT for as long as I could. <laughs> oh, he also went to a high school called St. Andrews, Matt. Dave oh, went no to St. Andrews, yeah, as did we. There you go. I know. Crazy. So you could have seen this coming a mile away. Anyway, Dave, Said thank kid. you. Oh, there we go. Thank <laughs> you very much for joining us. Geology is great. Listeners, I'm not kidding. I love the stuff. Uh, I look forward to using it. It's great. The quality. He's not kidding about the quality. It's real. Uh, check it out. Geology.com. Uh, geology with an IE at the end. Um and you can see what he was saying. All the testimonials are on there. So um, yeah, I can set up a code for your uh, discount code for your listeners if you'd like. Yeah, why don't we do that? All right, Go we'll make it. it tickled 25 for 25% off. Tickled Dang. 25. There you Excellent. go, listeners. We are, we at this podcast is showing you the nature of reality and saving you cash. <laughs> Thank you, Dave, for joining yeah. us. It's been a no pleasure. Problem. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Cheers. See ya. So that is Dave Scaff, uh, co-founder of Geology and co-parent of uh, Marguerite McDonald. He's a dude. Yeah, really, really cool dude. Great to meet him. And the fact that he plays hockey too, right? Like that just... That, that, right. that bumped him up him a up? couple, it took him up a couple, like he, I was already holding him in high regard, but it, you know, of course, when you hear that he's a hockey player, it bumps him up a little bit in my, you know, in my personal. It's <laughs> one of those things that in the, in the, in the emotions of breakups and stuff, you like it, you, you kind of don't want to like the one who comes after you, Right. Sure. But there's the, there's, there's a natural ur- yeah. There's there's a natural urge and yeah, of course. And uh, it, it was kind of impossible with him because he's a really nice guy. He's always been great uh, with her. 
Uh, and as you can see, he's interesting. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, talented, smart, funny. Uh, dinner at their house is always great. It's a, as Dave kind of pointed out, it's kind of a joke fest between me, Dave, and Marguerite at the dinner table. Always. Sweet. Yeah. So, um, yeah, listeners, check it out. Geology is great shit. It's a, a great product. Um, That's right. And just again, if you didn't catch that, uh, there's a discount code for listeners. It's tickled 25. Yeah, 25% off. That's the real deal. Uh, okay, so um, I've got one for you. All right. Uh, I don't know where I read this. I read it somewhere in the last week. Uh, it sort of comes, it comes to mind when he's talking about sort of, um, you know, the liquids and solids and whatever and skincare products. Have you ever heard mm -hmm. of the word immiscible? I have. Yeah. Like from chemistry. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's so the, and there's also miscible. So yeah. miscible is li two liquids that will form, go homogeneous when mixed. Yeah. And immiscible is two liquids that won't like oil and water. Um, yeah. Like they form a solution versus forming a heterogeneous mixture. Or homogeneous. I think right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's like, wait, so that's a, that's a specialty version of mixable and unmixable. Is it's it, a little bit like one that we had recently, which was, you know, soluble, right? <laughs> yeah. So, soluble versus solvable. Right. right. And people would call a problem insolvable they would call it in that problem is insoluble it's the same thing it's like those substances are immiscible immiscible it's like don't right? you mean immic don't you mean unmixable it's like no i don't i <laughs> uh -uh. mean uh -uh. immiscible <laughs> so and it's got uh, the miss it's like m-i-s-c right so it's, -I -S -C. it's almost it's almost like well if you think about like does miscellaneous or miscellany like mm. those have the same root right like Mm. Maybe mm. like the miss. Miss the different parts, the different parts, right? The, the, That's very interesting. How should okay. I say the miscellaneous different parts? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Joey and I, um, ever since I started using geology, I have referred to, uh, um, on an almost daily basis, my skincare regimen that I, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Joey and I have what you might, uh, describe as dueling skincare regimen. She claims that hers has, uh, is decades predates mine by decades. Uh, I don't think, I don't believe in time for one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, but I think we should have her on here quickly to talk about both um how beautiful i've become since i've started using geology product uh, uh and but also just uh you know to showcase sort of what uh i've learned from the guys at geology uh debating a woman about skincare so let's so let's get her on and see what she has to say about that So uh, here we are with uh, Joey. Hi, guys. Uh, in what's uh, hi, Joey? In uh, the battle of the regiments. <laughs> so uh, we've just been talking to Dave Scaff, and I wanted to open this discussion by um, telling our listeners that during a period of bathroom flux recently, when our uh, cosmetics were were not in their usual spot. You basically just started stealing all my geology stuff to use for your regimen. It smells really good. <laughs> and um, while you have claimed to have had a regimen for much longer than me. Since I was 14. I mean, I'm just looking at our foreheads here and I'm like, I have a. My forehead's covered. I don't think you can compare foreheads. Okay, so but but I have <laughs> but I have beautiful skin, courtesy of geology. Now. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm just pointing out that my regimen is clearly um, uh, both rigorous, disciplined, and quite obviously superior to yours. I don't know. What do you think? 
<laughs> I think a that you're ridiculous. Um, B, you you are very dedicated to your regimen, and there is a lot of talk in this house about it. A lot. <laughs> so, what can you tell the listeners, just for for guys uh, or even women, because they're now unisex who might be considering uh, starting their own regimen? What kind of sort of revolutionary effect it's had on me? It seems to bring you a lot of joy. <laughs> and I mean, your skin does look Dave really Scaff good. Dave <laughs> says that a regimen should be fun, right? So this is... You enjoy it. Like yeah. you you have a lot of fun. And like I said, there's a lot of talk about your regimen in this house. And uh, as for the products, I think they're amazing. And I'm completely hooked and sold. So I think that was a, I guess, a happy accident that our cosmetics and cleaning facial cleaning supplies weren't in the same place. Yeah. And what do you think of the co-wash? You're stealing a lot of the co-wash too, right? I, not a lot. I just have more hair than you do. <laughs> and it, but it's great. When, I love it because I have curly hair and it has a tendency to be a little dry. So it's, it's kind of, it's amazing. Okay. So uh, two thumbs up for geology from this house. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks geology. We Thanks. love you. There you have it. So um, I have, I do not have an Oriobindo for you. I just have a couple of sentences which I just thought were amazing. So it's from this book called the Tripura Rahasya. And it's basically about finding the self, right? So, um, you know, the whole goal of yoga. Um, and the whole goal of any spiritual seeking, right? Nothing on skincare regimens in uh, Oriamendo's writing. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if you have a good skincare regimen, you're taking care of yourself. Of right? one's self. Uh, of one's self. Self-care. Okay. Self-care. So um, it's just a great couple of sentences. It's they say, It goes like this. What kind of effort can avail to disclose the eternally resplendent consciousness? Being, coat, being coated with a thick crust of infinite dispositions, it is not easily perceived. The incrustations must first be soaked in the running stream of mind control and carefully scraped off with the sharp chisel of investigation. Then one must turn the closed urn of crystal quartz, namely the mind cleaned in the aforesaid manner, on the grinding wheel of alertness, and finally open the lid with the lever of discrimination. It, it almost <laughs> sounds like some kind of like consciousness care. Right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's the directions for soul care. That, sh you know, if geology was doing this, they'd have it printed on a little card and you would get it when you bought your own soul. So there you have it. Thanks for listening. We will be back with you in a week. Bye bye. At the present moment, traveling town to town. Mystery of emotion Right here, right now Right here, right now Whoa, right here, right now You've been listening to How to Tickle Yourself with your hosts, Duff McDonald and Matt McButter. You can help us by liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast with others. You can talk to us and see what else is happening on Instagram and Facebook at How to Tickle Yourself. This program was recorded in Studio B of the historic Rockledge Recording Studio and the Tunnel Under Arundel. Right here, right now, our original 16-part theme music was written and recorded by the legendary Paul Reddick and Kyle Ferguson of the Sidemen, with the brilliant Steve Mariner on bass and drums and in the mixing room. The podcast is produced and distributed by Storic Media. Our editor is Andrew Steiner. Our coordinator is Samantha Abramovitz. Our producers are Kristen Verbitsky and Chuck LaBella. For more information, visit storicmedia.com 
That's S T O R I C media.com. My love, my dear.